Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. It is a very gray, rainy morning here in Portland, Oregon. It was just absolutely dumping when I went to let the birds out. They, um, the ducks were, were super fine. They don't even notice when it's just absolutely pouring, but the chickens don't wanna come out of their coop. They like to stay under their covered awning area. So I didn't make a House Frau Friday video on Friday. Instead, I took advantage of the really nice weather to get some yard work done. And then over the weekend, I noticed when folks were commenting on some of my older videos, um, a question that was posited was, how do you deal with free ranging your chickens in your garden? How do you keep them from scratching and destroying everything? Now I have a number of videos where I talk about the fact that I have a three paddock rotational system. In the old days, I used to just let the chickens free range in the entire garden in the winter. And what I found is they did too much damage, especially once I put in the rain garden. They would scratch and destroy and move a lot of the mulch and the earth down over the bottom of the rain garden and clog up all of that gravel down there. And it was a real mess. I also found they tended to huddle under my um, back pergola. They would hang out there in the rain instead of under their awning and then they would poop all right outside my back door. If I left the back door open, they would try and get into the house. It was not a great design system. So eventually I decided they're gonna stay in this three row, three paddock rotational system. And that's worked very well for us. It means that I can kind of mob graze them and control what um, impact they have in particular sections of the orchard at any given time. I can just lock off an area and then I can let that area recover. However, my annual veggie garden then doesn't have the benefit of the chickens scratching and pecking and the ducks billing and removing slugs, slug eggs, weed seeds, things like that. So in the off season for the annual veggie garden, I do let the poultry out when I am working. So they are allowed to be a supervised disturbance in my garden. I kind of keep an eye on them, kind of herd them to areas I want to work um, have them work through. And then I discourage them from going in areas where they're maybe being a little aggressive or they are scratching too much of the soil into the path. Ladies, ladies, I'm trying to get some work done here. You go over there, go over there with your sisters. So much like a shepherd would be out kind of, you know, guarding um, her flock, but also directing them toward appropriate patch pastures. I don't allow my poultry to be unsupervised in the annual veggie garden. I'm directing them where I want them to go. And I'm also making sure that I am keeping an eye on them uh, for their protection. I'm making sure my dogs aren't loose in that part of the yard while my poultry is out. So I wanna show you a little bit here about how that looked on Friday because maybe that will illustrate a little bit better for you what's happening in the garden. I took advantage of the good weather on Friday to continue to rework some of my annual veggie beds. Now you can see here, I had to remove the existing border. What I'm doing is I'm deepening the beds. As I continue to add chop and drop and chicken manure and things like that, I find that the beds begin to overflow their berm. And so I'm having to create deeper beds to allow the biomass to have room to exist. This is a good problem for me to be having but it is requiring a chunk of labor here at the end of winter. Now the birds are thrilled because I've pulled up the logs and the urbanite blocks and have exposed tons of invertebrates and seeds that they are happily foraging for. Couldn't resist the opportunity to show you how absolutely thrilled the ducks are to be let loose in the rain garden. Because they don't scratch, I can allow them to forage here. They are billing under the mulch for slugs and slug eggs. While the ducks are content to do their own thing elsewhere in the garden, I find that the chickens like to stick very close to me. They know that if I am digging, I will be turning up seeds and grubs and all kinds of yummy things for them. So they tend to get a little bit underfoot sometimes and I have to shoo them out of the way, but that's okay. Excuse me. Excuse me, madam. I'm trying to work here. 
allowing the chickens to be that stochastic burst of disturbance in the annual veggie garden means they come in and they quickly clean up a lot of weeds and a lot of bugs, but they aren't allowed to stay so long that they begin to damage biodiversity nor are the chickens allowed in this section of the garden long enough to damage the structure and design here. The annual veggie garden is not meant to withstand constant poultry pressure, but again, it benefits from those bursts of activity. It benefits from the cleanup crew coming in and then moving on to the next section of the garden. Here you can really get a good view at why chickens are such an effective force of disturbance in the garden. They scratch and peck and scratch and peck and can remove those pests and weed seeds that are right under the surface of the mulch. But at the same time, you can see if that kind of behavior is a constant pressure in your garden, how it can be overwhelming and destructive, especially to perennials. On Friday afternoon, I was able to rework two of the seven annual veggie beds in the backyard of my permaculture garden, and then spread several wheelbarrows of wood chip mulch around the beds. You can see here, now that the wood chips are down and the beds are reworked, it's time to move the chickens out of this area so they don't undo everything I have just done. Reworking the beds not only allowed me to deepen the veggie beds themselves, but also to deepen the amount of mulch which serves as a sponge and to widen the paths a little bit so that I can better get a wheelbarrow through in the summer months. It's gray and rainy toward the end of this project and you can see here the wood chips are heavily saturated. As they continue to break down, they will be a wonderful sponge helping hold water near my annual veggie beds. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that was helpful for you all and gave you a little bit better picture of how it is that I utilize poultry in the annual veggie portion of the garden and how I prevent them from being a destructive force. I want them to be a regenerative force. I want them to increase fertility in my garden. I don't want them to wreak absolute havoc and have too much disturbance, too much involvement with that part of my garden. And this is what I have found works best for me. So if you have other systems that you utilize, particularly if you're in a smaller property and you have to figure out how is it that I balance my use of the land and allowing my poultry to free range and the health and um, you know longevity, especially of my perennials in my garden. If you found better ways to balance that than I have, or you have a system that works for you, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. I'll be back really soon. Thanks. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and check out how you can support this channel down below in the description. Bye-bye.